This video about the most powerful single board computer has been supported by Skillshare.com. The first Latte Panda was a great product that I've demonstrated in the pressure sensing yoga mat videos. The manufacturer DF Robot has now released the highly anticipated successor, the Latte Panda Alpha. And they've sent one to me in exchange for another yoga mat. <laughs> Hell no. But I think I've got an equally awesome application for it. But let me put the panda through its paces before we get to that. The prices have risen significantly, but so have the specs. It has been advertised as sole of a MacBook in a pocket-sized board, which might not be the most desirable association to appeal to the DIY crowd these days. I would have gone with something like hardware of a MacBook, but without Apple. Either way, it's a capable performer for CAD software like Fusion 360. And real-time computer vision and processing with this stereoscopic camera from Econ Systems, for example. It's also perfectly suitable for multimedia consumption, like 4K 60fps video playback. And decent FPS video games, all without overheating. That's easy for the Panda, but I've got to make an effort to not get lost in a multi-hour Factorio session. The tiny Latte Panda has a ton of connectivity on board. PCI Express, USB 3, HDMI, Gigabit Ethernet and 5 GHz Wi-Fi. With an M.2 adapter you can install PCI Express cards, like the good old parallel port. Or should I say you can precariously perch the Latte Panda on top of some PCI Express cards? I'm not even kidding. With a dedicated power supply, this single board computer can benefit from external GPUs. This constellation in particular doesn't make a lot of sense, because there are only four PCI Express lanes, which will bottleneck the RTX's performance. But it boots, the drivers are installing without a problem, and the Cinebench score will probably be the best you'll see from a single board computer in a while. But is it still a single board compu? Ah, syntactics, let's move on. Just like in the previous version, there is an 80 mega microcontroller built into it, with a hardwired programmer and a lot of GPIO pins on the pin headers. That gives it a lot of potential for processor heavy Arduino Leonardo projects. But I don't like it. The 7th generation Intel Core M3 processor is a beast, but practically the only way it can interface with all of these GPIO pins is the slow 8 bit 80 mega microcontroller via a primitive serial over USB port to make matters worse. One can get reasonable latencies and high enough pulse frequencies by renouncing the bulky Arduino software and instead using LUFA, the lightweight USB framework for AVRs. Only a low-level assembler program could be faster in taking serial data and writing it into the GPIO registers. But even then, the rest of the Latte Panda is not a real-time system yet. It could decide to prioritize reporting your latest browsing habits to Microsoft over controlling a time-critical CNC movement. It's not ideal. You can't really flash the Gerbil controller to the 80 mega because it's not a supported chip. And you can't effortlessly install Linux CNC because its ancient modded kernel doesn't understand the brand new Latte Panda hardware yet. I'm not holding it against the Panda because it's a very powerful package anyway. I'm just saying that if you're interested in fast or time-sensitive GPIO operations, you might want to take a look at the competition whose pin headers are connected to the CPU directly. Some modern servo drives can store a few commands in advance and play them back later with their own precise timing. In which case every operating system would have enough time to think of and deliver new instructions. But that's still an uncommon method. I wouldn't want to rely on that for my CNC machine. The next revision should be a Latte Panda Omega with an FPGA on board or at least a more powerful microcontroller. For applications that require trivial motion control, data acquisition and high performance computing, the Alpha is the perfect little board though. And I think I've got one such example in front of me right now. This is a digital X-ray imager that I got from one of my Patreon supporters. Very awesome. I'll put a link to a Hackaday article in the description, which describes the device and its interface in much greater detail. Yeah. 
In short, it's a long, narrow image sensor that looks at a plain old piece of intensifying screen. To capture a 2D image, it has to be moved through an exposure. It senses such a movement with a linear encoder, and it automatically drives the CCD and the conversion circuitry accordingly. The data is shifted out pixel by pixel in a weird 13-bit format. But with the incredible open-source SIGROC software and a $6 breakout board from Banggood, you can make a very powerful logic analyzer and just customize one of the many pre-made protocol decoders. We are interested in a differential signal on a shielded twisted pair. A common RS485 converter chip can be used to shift that to logic compatible levels, which can then be read as safely by the Cypress FX2 chip. In the meantime, I've switched to a superior operating system for the Panda. SIGROC will automatically upload the logic analyzer firmware to the FX2 breakout board. To use its highest sample rate of 24 mega samples per second, you've got to use one of the first eight channels. And then we can just start capturing the test signal that the X-ray imager puts out when it's powered on. The protocol decoder is basically an 8 megabaud 13-bit UART with one start bit and no stop bits. The gentleman who has written the Hackaday article has also published a Python script that turns the raw data into an actual image file. As well as a comprehensive FPGA project that performs the conversion on the fly without buffering in SIGROC altogether. Sadly, this unspectacular little grayscale gradient has to serve as the conclusion of today's ad, because I didn't manage to generate any X-rays. Even if I had, I couldn't show it because it would be illegal. But honestly, I just deep fried a lot of costly high voltage components and am now very frustrated and very soaked in mineral oil. Maybe a valuable information to take home though is that IKEA's white mineral oil, which they call quit, not sure if that's right, seems to be chemically pure and therefore ideally suited for your own high voltage experiments or submerged computer builds. And that's all I got on the Latte Panda and X-ray imaging for now. Skillshare has more. It's an online learning community with thousands of classes in science and technology, arts and crafts, business and finance and all the wonderful things in between. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to all of these high quality classes. And with that the freedom to learn whatever and whenever you want from real experts in their respective fields. The Raspberry Pi, a much more common single board computer than the Latte Panda, is covered in this fundamentals course for example. The creator doesn't seem to have an x-ray imager, but he shows you everything you need to know to interface with external hardware. At less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, the Skillshare Premium Membership is also more affordable than most other learning platforms. If you are among the first 500 to click the link below, it is even more affordable than that completely free for the first two months. So give him a try today. Thank you for watching and see you soon.